We're here with uh, Dr. Gabriela Alvarez. She's been talking about coffee sourcing at Nestle to the uh, Cranfield EPN meeting. Uh, Gabriela, I wonder if you could give us a quick overview of your, the presentation you made today. Mm -hmm. We're talking about sustainable uh, value chains, and in particular in Nestle. And, uh, and they have different approaches. I think it, coffee sourcing is one of the first ones that came through sustainable sourcing and some of the realization of social, environmental impacts. And uh, my research was focused on Nestle and some alternative views of what they have. So they have the Nespresso, who has been almost 10 years, I think, on this road. And they have learned a lot about how to, to, to think about the sourcing from a farmer's perspective, from a community perspective, from a quality perspective, which many times is forgotten in some of the other sourcing programs. And they created a niche, a niche program that have expanded over the years. Um, but then in the same company, you have someone like Nescafe, mm -hmm. other brands that are much bigger brands, larger brands, worldwide brands, where movements are much harder. I mean, they're, they're heavy machineries to, to move. Um, so how do they think about sustainability different? So in the same company, Nestle, which is, is, is uh, is challenged by the scarcity in resources that they will have. I mean, there is not enough coffee being planted, cocoa being planted, a lot of the raw materials, palm oil, there's a lot of things that are, uh, that will be very, very challenging in the future to secure your raw material. How does that one company can think of different approaches to make a portfolio, if you want to call it, of, of uh, sustainable sourcing solutions that adapt to each of those? And, and some are, are particular. Some things Nespresso can do uh, on their markets and they're very targeted and gourmet coffee and some others are open for Nescafe and it's just realizing in your company how do you put all these different approaches together. They also have cocoa, they also have palm oil, so all their sourcing is, is going through a lot of challenges for the future and going back and looking at origin countries has been a realization I think for many companies over the last 10 years and some companies are further ahead on this. So that's what my research is about. Um, there's some differences. The one thing that is across the board in a way is the going outside of your own walls. And that I think is for everyone a, a big realization that sustainability, you cannot do it either in academia or sitting in your office or a company in an internal meeting. You have to reach out and you have to reach out in all these directions to things that you don't control. So it's, it's, it's uncomfortable, mm -hmm. it's difficult. Um, and it's the only way you can make some sort of progress. So how do you involve all those stakeholders? And that's, uh, that's a bit some of those challenges and the things that have been learned over the last uh, five, ten years on this topic and the challenges that still are ahead. So that's more or less the topic when I'm here to talk today. Excellent. So Nestle is a consumer packaged goods company. They have strong brands that they have to reach out globally to consumers and to uh, some very powerful customers, mass merchandisers, retailers, etc. Could you talk a bit about the challenges and the ways that they're working with those consumers and customers? Yeah, we have different uh, consumer research. is is is, is not as clear as we, what we would like uh, to be because if they ask you, do you want to be good? Everyone wants to be good, and do you want to be a responsible consumer? Everyone wants to be a responsible consumer. Market shares are not really responsible consumers on one side. On the other side, you expect the companies as part of the brand value. If you see a brand, you expect that company to behave mm -hmm. sustainably and ethically and all those things. You are surprised. It's it's almost negative. If you hear something bad about that company. Uh, it's not what they're doing good because you expect a large brand to be good, to do things like they should be done. Um, so I think the, the whole consumer relationship, we're getting also a bit more aware of how it goes. So that's on one side in terms of their image of the company. But the role where the consumer plays the larger role is on the consumption side. So it's the behavior of the consumer. So how do you just keep enough water for one cup, not uh, the, the, the largest coffee drinker in the world is the sink, mm. <laughs> they say. <laughs> because people, uh, people do, do make more coffee than what they, what they use. So that's some of the things that, for example, Nespresso in the single serve, uh, but also on the, the kettle, they have echo kettle. So there's a lot of solutions and they're just getting to the tip. Because consumer behavior change takes a generation. It's not like something that, and also it's not nice to a company telling you what you will do or will not do as a consumer. So it's a big, long dialogue, and I think it's starting to understand as well what does the consumer really care about, what are the things they want to do, uh, what do they expect from the company, what they are ready to do themselves. For example, in the Nespresso side, the whole recycling issue, it's aluminum. So aluminum is a very difficult 
uh, environmental heavy uh, material to make the first time the package, but it's almost infinitely recyclable. So the big, big thing there uh, is how do you get to recycle uh, that? So, uh, and that obviously is huge. One, from the consumer attitude. Second one, from having the ability to do it. But it's both things that need to move alongside. So the whole consumer issue, I think the two ends are still very much, companies have gotten more sophisticated what they can manage directly. And they're still learning what they can manage or what they can do and how they establish a new dialogue with the consumer. But they also need to establish a new dialogue with the farmer, uh, with the farmer and the next generation of farmers. Average age is something like 62 in coffee. Who's going to plant coffee? And to plant coffee, you want it to be not just sustainable, you want to, to make a living out of it. And so companies need to understand all the sourcing side from a per people perspective. Uh, on both ends. So I guess that's some of the things we've heard. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks very much, Gabriel. Thank you.